Welled up just about as much as you can. But she had a very gentle face. Her eyes seemed to say, I'm so tired. And I'm so young. My sister Elise is only 16, and she couldn't have been much older than Elise. The men said they had traveled 90 miles on a donkey for the census, and they needed a place to stay. I quoted him our price and started to lead them to our, our large upper room where all our guests stay. But before we got to the steps, the lady, she backed up against the wall and she closed her eyes and she put her hands on her side and she was very, very still. And when she opened her eyes, all she said was, Joseph, that was his name, Joseph, it's time. Well, I don't know what that meant, but Joseph knew it meant something because he started moving back and forth really quick and said, quickly, we need a place to stay now. So I took them up the steps to our Levon, our large upper room, where people just lay down their blankets and rest for the night. Everybody was already asleep, asleep except for a few men in the back, a couple of Roman soldiers and a, a couple of merchants around a fire, and they got very quiet when we walked in. But then one of them whispered something to one of them, and they looked at the lady, and they all started to laugh. And she looked at her husband as if to say, isn't there someplace else we could go? Well, I began to look around for some place for them to sleep, and I, I was going to have to ask somebody to move. And of all the things I hate in the whole world, even cleaning out the stables, the thing that I hate the most is waking somebody up and asking them to move over in the upper room. They always get so angry when I ask them to move over. So I began to look for someone with a very kind face and very small muscles. <laughs> I finally found an old man that I was going to wake up. But the husband said to me, pulled on my sleeve and said, isn't there some place more private we could go? Because whatever happens in the Levant, in the upper room, happens for everyone to see. And I started thinking. And I said, yes, follow me. And I took them out behind the end. And I took them to my special place. The place where I go on hot summer afternoons to sleep and take a nap in the, in the cool hay. The place I go after I've been punished to be by myself and to think. I took them to our stable, the place where I always keep the hay fresh and clean, my special place. And I said to the man, will this do? And he looked at his wife and said, Mary, this is perfect. That was her name. He said, Mary, this is perfect. He said, I said, Yakim. He said, Yakim, thank you so much. You have done a wonderful job. So I went back to my bed and went back to sleep because I had been working hard. And I know I would have slept the whole night through, except this was not to be an ordinary night. I woke up to see light coming through the shutters of my window. And I could tell by the, by the fact that there weren't any village noises and by the fact that my eyes were still really heavy that it was still in the middle of the night. I opened my shutters and looked over the next hill and there was a glow of light coming from just over the other side of the hill. And not only was this, this light, but there was this rushing sound, kind of like the water makes in a brook in the springtime. Kind of, like, kind of like the wind makes through the trees in the fall. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, it was gone. Like some giant breath had blown it out. I thought, what is that? And I lay back on my bed and was thinking, what was that? And then I realized, just over the next hill, that's where Jesse and Uncle Abram are keeping their sheep. Before I knew what I was doing, I was running down the streets of Bethlehem, through the fields, over the hill. But I stopped because I could hear people 
running back my way. And somebody had a really big voice and he said, run faster, can't you go any faster than that? You're running like a bunch of day old lambs. It was my Uncle Abram. Uncle Abram, Jesse, it's me, Yakin. And I started running with him. Uncle Abram, where are we going? And what was that light that I saw on the other side of the hill and that noise? Why, Yaquim, he said, what a night to be alive. That was none other than a host of angels telling us that tonight, in the village of Bethlehem, Messiah has been born. Messiah born tonight? Uncle Abram, how are we going to find him? The angels told us that too, Yaquim. They said the baby would be wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. But Uncle Abram, there are hundreds of mangers in, in Bethlehem. How are we going to find the right manger? Yaquim, it may take an hour. It may take two hours. It may take all night. But we're going to find the baby in the manger. Baby in a manger, Uncle LeBron and, and Jesse and everyone, stop. I know where Messiah is. I've met his father, and I've met his mother. Come, follow me. So I took them to our stable, and it was just as the angels had said. When I looked around the corner, there in the manger was the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. When the man with the kind face saw me, he said, Yaquim, come in and, and bring your friends. So we all came and gathered around the manger. And my uncle Abram, he got on his knees. And Jesse got on his knees. And everyone got on their knees. And we all got on our knees. And my uncle Abram began to Lord God, King of the universe, I thank you that you have not forgotten your people, Israel. Lord God, King of the universe, I thank you that on this most holy night, you have remembered us, your most humble servants. Lord God, I praise you and thank you that you have not forgotten us, but you have sent Messiah to be our Uncle Abram was praying. I was looking at the baby. And I'm thinking, how is a baby going to save us? <clears throat> what could one baby do against one Roman soldier, much less against all the legions of Rome? So when he was through, I, I asked the man with the kind face, Sir, how will your baby save us? He said, Yaquim, that the angels have spoken to me too. And an angel said to me that I should call my son Jesus, which means God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. From their sins. I looked at the lady with a gentle smile, and she seemed to nod her approval, and I reached out. And even though he was asleep, his little fingers wrapped around mine, held on tight there, almost like he had a claim on my life. Uncle Abram and Jesse and the others went back to their flocks, and I went back to my bed. And I thought that night, and I have thought every night since then, Save me from my sins. How will he save me from my sins? My mother tells me that sin is a grievous thing. That it is the enemy of God. And I know that it is going to be painful when Messiah takes away my sins. But I have felt Messiah's touch. And I know that whatever he does in my life, it will be gentle, and it will be good. 
sometimes in the midst of the mundane, in the middle of the ordinary, a ray of eternal truth shines into our hearts and leaves a glow there that will never fade away. But Joachim was right. It would be painful when Messiah took away his sins. But what he couldn't imagine was it would not be painful for Joachim. It would be painful for the Messiah. For the baby in the manger grew to be Jesus of Nazareth, who died on the cross to take away Yaquim's sins and my sins and your sins. You and I are going to be opening some presents before too long. And let me just encourage you to encourage others that you know. Whatever presents are open, make sure you don't leave one present unopened. That is God's gift of His Son to us. Let the baby in the manger be who he was destined to be, Messiah and Savior.